Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this great blessing. 
that we have in you today. Guide us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Tonight, my message is entitled, The Beginning of Miracles. Turn to John chapter 2. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Both Jesus and the disciples were invited to the wedding. And when the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said, They have no wine. And Jesus said, Woman, what does that have to do with us? Wow. Amen. What does that have to do with us? Fantastic. My hour is not yet come. And his mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. All right, that is verse 6, okay? Um, that is gallons, 20 to 30 gallons each. And Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they fill them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the priest, and they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. Verse 11. This is the beginning of miracles, which Jesus did in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. Now go all the way to John chapter 4. Okay. Have you found John chapter 4? Verse 46. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said unto him, Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down before my child dies. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word which Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. When he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he the, them of the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was that same hour which Jesus had said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. This again is the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. Amen. Amen. Now, there are several wonderful lessons we can learn from these two miracles. All right? And that is that the first miracle, which is the beginning of miracles, is a financial miracle or a miracle of provision. Okay? Now, you will notice that as time went by, Jesus still did miracles of provision. And a miracle of provision is a miracle where... You are, your needs are provided for. Okay? Now, most of us being money hungry are not interested in such miracles of provision. We want riches and we want to be rich. But the beginning of miracles 
in Jesus' ministry is a miracle of providing what is needed. Amen. And so, all throughout, whenever Jesus was doing miracles, which were not medical miracles, he was providing what was needed, like in the multiplying of the fish and the loaves. He didn't make somebody a rich fisherman. He, he provided enough fish and enough bread for the occasion. What do you think? Is it fantastic? So I'm just trying to tune your mind to get towards what Jesus wants to do for you. Amen. Amen. Because it's not everything that was written that this is what the kind of miracle Jesus can do and will do. But we can learn a lot by seeing what he did do. And one of the things that he did do was to provide what was needed at the time. Amen. Now, therefore, because this is a, uh, the first miracle and the beginning of the miracles, and when Jesus said, when the Bible says that the end of a thing is better than the beginning, and because the Bible says the glory of the latter house will be greater, and that especially the scripture that says that the end of the thing is, will be better than the beginning, I propose that financial miracles are lower and lesser than medical mir miracles. Financial miracles are of a lower order. Okay? Are you there? And when I say financial miracles, when I look at Jesus' miracles that have to do with finances, they did not have to do with enriching us. Do you get it? Now, most of the time, we are looking for miracles of greed, greedy miracles. Are you with me? Are you with me? But I'm not talking about miracles of greed. I'm talking about miracles of supplying the needs. Amen. So I propose as a first point that because this kind of miracle came first, and the Bible calls it the beginning of miracles, that when miracles are going to begin in your life, one of the main things that is going to begin is God and providing what you need. Amen. Amen. And that's a great blessing. Now, the second thing that I want us to notice is that when a miracle occurs in your life, you must notice that a miracle has happened. Do you understand? What do I mean? What I mean is that there are things which are not miracles. Do you see? Then there are things which are miracles. So you must, you must know when miracles are not happening so that you know when miracles are happening. Wow. That is why when this miracle happened, the Bible calls it the beginning of miracles. Jesus had been living. He had been eating. He had been in his mother's house. He had disciples. He was in the ministry. But this was the beginning of a miracle. In other words, it was the first miracle. It was a miracle that was supposed to be noticed that this is a miracle. Now, whenever we are at crusades and somebody testifies and says that, I came here on the first day, but I was not healed. And I came here on the second day, but I was not healed. And then I came here on the third day, and I was not healed. But today, I felt within me the power of God that I should stand up or I should walk or I should open my eyes or whatever it is. 
and then suddenly I could. It really helps us to see and notice that the person was not healed and that there was no miracle on the first day. You see, because as human beings, we want it to be that there's magic every day. Are you with me? But God has not made us magicians. So it is a great blessing to notice the arrival of a miracle. So that this thing that has happened is a miracle. Amen. And when you do, and you recognize it, and you note it, it heralds the flow of more miracles in your life. It's like a dream or a vision. On the day that you first take notice of the first dream that you have had, that God has spoken to you through a dream or a vision, especially a dream, you will notice that it marks the beginning of dreams. If I say, if I go to a class of class three children or class four or class five, and I tell them, I, I start talking and I use the English word dreams, all the children will understand what I mean by dream. Because everybody dreams naturally. The other day I was lying down on a chair asleep. I, I was watching the television and I slept. And one of my children came with their phone to record my snoring. <laughs> what a shock. I suddenly opened my eyes and I saw a phone over my head. <laughs> they were either videoing me or recording that I was snoring. But I was so surprised. I said, what is happening? They said, they, they were recording your snoring. But I was very shocked because I was dreaming. I wasn't snoring. As far as I was concerned, I, I had a dream. But they were noticing snoring. So when it comes to dreams, you find out that it's the commonest thing to dream. You know? But there comes a time when you recognize that God speaks to you through a dream. Then that's the beginning of dreams in your life. But it's how to notice that a dream through which God has spoken to you has started or has come. Aha. Uh -huh. Amongst the dreams you are getting, that's the beginning of dreams. And that's how miracles are the beginning of miracles. It's how to notice that God has provided. Now, I want to encourage you to believe in God as a miracle-working God, not just for medical miracles, but also for financial miracles. Amen. Now, the miracle that I want you to believe God for, okay, is the miracle of supplying what you need. Yes. What you need. What do you need? What do you need? What do you need today? I'm asking you a question. What do you need today? What is your need? We serve a God who can supply the queerest, oddest needs. If you know what is a human being, you will know that a human being is one of the most complicated organisms that can be created that has been created very complex and God can supply your needs now there is a course in the University of Science and Technology called quantity surveying I think or what is it called what, what is the name of that course when the, the quantities building technology when you, valuation, when you check the value of things, 
is it building technology? Land economy. Yeah. They do that course for four years. That should tell you that it's not easy to place a value on something. But all of us must, when we, when we are not good at land economy, please, is it the right course, land economy? Yes, when you are not good at land economy, you are not good at valuing or the quantities of it, knowing the cost of this thing that has come. You see, this wine that was provided, it has a value. It has a value. And God can provide for you valuable things that you will not pay for with money. And so you must learn to recognize that God has actually given me money. God has, God has actually cared for me. God has actually answered my prayer. But when we are ungrateful... And you work somewhere and they give you a nice car to drive and whatever and whatever and, and then you, 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 somebody asks you what is your salary then you mention a certain figure which is actually a percentage because you are getting a car you have got accommodation you have got school fees paid for your child you have got so many other benefits and so many different things then you mention this was a Standard Chartered, we don't end like that. If you work at Standard Chartered, you get so much. That is because people don't value all the things. And these are the kind of people who miss the miracles when they happen. Yeah, these are the people, they miss them. When, when God is doing a miracle, they don't see. Many years ago, somebody was doing something for me in the office. And I said to myself that I am more than Prince Charles because I don't think the Prince of Wales has got such a benefit. And people thought I was joking. But I tell you, there are many things that are so valuable. I have classmates today, they still iron their own shirts at the age of 50. I'm talking about super, super specialists, doctors who can operate on the Eye, left side of your eyeball. But if, they are go, if their car is dead, they have to wash it themselves. If they will iron a shed, they have to iron. They have to wash. They have to do everything. I may not be in America, but I have a lot of people who can iron my shed for me. And you see, it, it's a, it, is, it is a blessing that I have noticed. Yeah. It's a blessing that I have noticed. But I see people don't notice when they are being blessed. And those are the very people, when a miracle is happening or a beginning of a certain river wants to start, they don't recognize it. And even, they even speak against it. And they say that, oh, yeah, yeah, we poured some water in, but we just diluted. There was a wine, wine syrup under the, wine, wine syrup under the, uh, this thing. Do you know wine syrup? When you add water to it, it becomes wine. There was some wine originally that had dried up. When we put it in and we mix it now, we got some good wine. You, you, you even make, you belittle and make nothing of all that God does for you. You are the most dangerous person who must never be employed into full-time ministry because Charlie, well, like Charlie, if you are there, Charlie, so-so speaking against everything, criticizing. Hey! It's true. Before you realize, you have organized all pastors on union with demonstrations. Say that. No. We no go sit down. Monkey, they work, baboon, they chop. Hey. But I want to be one of those people who recognize a miracle has happened. A miracle has happened. And I can see it. This miracle of wine, I've seen it a number of times. When we were under threat at the Kolebu canteen. We had to leave 
the church. We were being forced out because I think the minister of health came to visit Kolibu and saw our chairs under the back. We had a lot of benches. We didn't have anywhere to keep them. So we had kept them at the back of the medical school canteen. So when they came and they saw, ha, whose benches are these? <laughs> they said, there's a church here. What church? How can a church be here? Hey, away with that church. There should not be any church in this place. And we had nowhere to go. And we looked into our bank account and there was an old cinema hall down the road. And we went to check the price of the cinema hall because it was not being used. And they told us, we went to Opera. The people who own Opera, all the cinemas in Ghana whose name begins with O, they own it. If your name begins with O, then it belongs to them. Yeah, it was the same people. Odeon, Orion, Olympio, Ofer, Oxford, Opera. If your name begins with O, it is for you. It is for them. And the name began with O. So we went to them and they told us 37 million CDs. 37.5 million CDs. This was in 19, um, 19, 1990. 1990. So we checked our bank account. Steve, how much did we have? 240,000 CDs. That's a stand up. They, they don't believe that you were there. He's an accountant. He has remembered. 240,000. That's what we had. Now, do you know how much 37 million was? At that time, one, one CD, one dollar was 350 CDs. One, one dollar, 350 CDs. By 19. 89, 1990, when the government changed. 19, this was 1990. They changed over in 2000. It moved from 350 to 9,000 whatever. You get it? That's management. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anybody I say anything. No. I say it's management. You are thinking bad thoughts in your head. So one, so that 350 CDs was how much? Was 350 was 100,000 US dollars. So they reduced the, after a lot of bargaining, I went to the opera. I met with the Lebanese people and I bargained, bargained, bargained. I said, you know, my father, this and that, he's played so many things. I said, we don't have money. Look, this and that. They said 35 million last. Money is on the left. Offer Cinema is on the right. We change it over like this. And we had 240,000, which was exactly $900. And we signed an agreement, $900. That is all that we had in the account. He's the accountant. He's here. Please, were you a student then? Yes, he was a student doing chartered um, accountancy, isn't it? You have finished Legon admin and you were doing chartered accountancy. That caused that people, a lot of people say we are doing CASTA something, something, something. He was doing that. He's a chartered accountant now. And he became a manager at Merchant Bank before he became into full-time ministry. But he was the accountant. He's a student because I was also a student. I cannot afford a real accountant. He's a student I can afford. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So he, he told, I checked, I called him. I remember I called him. He said, how much do we have? He said, to check 240000 That's $900. So we stand and agree. I signed. I said, I'm buying it. I am buying it. <laughs> wow. And we signed. I'm talking about the beginning of miracles. And the beginning of miracles is finally God will supply. When we sign, when we signed it, when we signed that 
at the beginning. We managed to agree with the people to pay in installments, over, spread it over one year or one and a half years, 18 months, to spread out that money. And it was my greatest headache to buy a structure without a roof, without water, without anything, without chairs, nothing. And we are under pressure from the Ministry of Health, Kolebu administrators, Kolebu security men, everybody was chasing us. And here was a young man in 1991, 92. I was 29 years old, 28 years old. I was 28 years old. I said I was a pastor. Instead of going to America to continue studies, I said I'm a pastor. I'm talking about the beginning of miracles. Yeah. And to cut a long story short, you cannot, you cannot really cut a long story short because the story is long. Yeah, you can't cut it short. How can you cut a long story short when the story is long? That's not a short story. <laughs> At the end of the day, by the time we were to pay every installment, eh, we had the money to pay every single installment, even before time. Wow. wow. This is the beginning of miracles. Is it fantastic? Yeah. So it's something that I noticed that God did. Now, with that, we had only 900 CDs. I organized a special, I had a friend, and I said, look, can you help us? We need to raise money. And so I said, no, this is what we are doing in the church. It's not, we are not serious. At that, at that time, Tuesdays, we don't even take offerings. See, we are, you are not serious. This is what you have to do. Print envelopes, do this. When you are taking tithes, stand in front of the church, shake hands with the people. Raise funds. Make a model of the church. So I made a model of the church covered with a glass and brought it to the canteen and had a special service. Hey! Raising funds for, because we had only 900 CDs and we needed 100,000. That's so you can understand the figures. And we had uh, 240,000 CDs. We needed 35 million. A lot of people came. They saw the model. I said, we are building a cathedral. 28 years old boy. I said, we are building a cathedral. God will help us to build a cathedral. Give today. Everybody give. God will pay. We raised a lot of money. Everybody gave. Fantastic. Just as I was standing on the stage, I think I was moving to the left. As I stand on this, I was going this way. Then I heard the voice of the Spirit say, all the money that you have received, all the money that you have collected, take all and give it to the man who came to, to help you to raise the funds. I said, what? What a shock! <laughs> I say I was moving to the left. I was going this way to the left, and the, the model was in front like this. And I went to the when the spirit spoke to me, said, Give everything. It was so painful that I decided not to count the money so that I would not have pains in me. Pains, pains. But I took it and I gave everything. When I gave it to him, he said, How? the church I said look the Holy Spirit has asked me to give you this money just take it and go quietly because I don't want any problem uh -huh. Uh -huh. but I tell you before the time we paid all the money to those people is it not amazing But some of you, you will never notice when something is done for you. You say, oh, I would have gotten it anyway. 
you know, I'm the type who attracts money. I'm the, I'm the financial type. I'm, I'm because of my management and because of... No. No. So you need to recognize miracles when they happen. Another miracle is this place where we are. The same thing happened. We were there happily living, happily ever after. I have no plans of leaving Koligono. I said Koligono is good because Accra is similar all over. Accra is just like India. You have a skyscraper here. Next door is a dirty place. Do you understand? So everywhere, some people say they are staying at East Legon, they are staying at Trasaco. Just outside when you go now, you see that this place is just like Mamobi. So we don't know. Every area is the same. So to me, I didn't see the difference between Kolegono and any area. So I said, no problem. But then we were bombed. And now we had to leave Kolegono. Helicopters will fly over the church in those days. Helicopter will come and circle over Kolegono. Do you, you know the flight path where normally helicopters pass? It doesn't pass through Kolegono. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Those helicopters that are going to Takrani for that, they don't pass through Kolegono. They pass somewhere else, but this time they come, then they'll go round, round, round on top of the Great Tower. And I'll come to the window and look out. You. <laughs> and we had to. We had to leave. And we needed money. This place was a warehouse. And we needed $1.5 million. All the places we bought are we bought from Lebanese men. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I went to talk to the Lebanese man. I said, look, Lebanese man, look at my face. I'm a fellow Lebanese man. You, see? <laughs> you know my father, eh? Can't you see my face? You know my father. <laughs> I negotiated and negotiated. That is how I, that's where I learned how to sell something. Most Ghanaians don't know how to sell and how to do business. He told me, he said, money is on the left. The house is on the right. May we change. That's all. There is no other variation. And it's something that have benefited me all my life. Most people, you are selling second-hand clothes. It doesn't work because you don't do, here's the bill on the right. Here's the money on the left. You change. You know, they say, oh, take it. Go and sell and pay. Bring. As you sell, then you'll be bringing. Two weeks time, you'll be bringing the money. Here's this. Go and sell and come. And you'll be bringing. That's why business doesn't work in Ghana. Most people. Most people, are, they are not making money. Yeah. So, we needed 1.5 million. We didn't have even 10,000. And God blessed us. And again, it's something I noticed. One day, we sat in an office with a lot of lawyers. And we presented a check. $1.5 million. We gave it to them. Said, give us the land on the left and the right. Yeah. Wow. I, I've learned to notice miracles. And some of you, God has blessed you in your job. You, maybe you don't even buy a car, but you haven't noticed it. You haven't noticed. Ask those who buy cars. They use all their life money to buy a car. Yeah. Some, if, if it, some of you have not noticed certain things God has done for you. Yes. That's why you always envy people who are abroad and you envy people who are in a different circumstance and you are always discontent. And when God does something, you don't see it. But the Bible says this was the beginning of miracle. And you something so small. Just the wine, water, wine. But it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Notice it. God has done something. And the third time I noticed this happen was we were buying a church in Labadi. This time, the church was another cinema hall that name started with O. Again, Olympio Cinema Hall for our church. And this time, too, the price was exactly the same as Ofer. 
And I remember when we, we said, how much is it? And they mentioned the amount. And I said to the accountant or whoever, pay. And he just paid. There was no delay, no wait, nothing. I said, we like it. Pay now. Finish. No gathering, nothing. And I saw again, God has done another miracle that so many years ago, how we suffered to get this money over one and a half years with a roofless building, this and that. God had actually raised us up to buy the same thing again. Just instantly, I realized that God had done another miracle. But you see, there are a lot of people, they don't notice what the Lord has done. Bishop Saki, as I drive through this town, I see people who are building and building forever and ever. They never finish. Look at us here with a roof over our head. We are no more building here. God has, God has blessed us. The building project is past. It's, it's marvelous. Go to people, they, have, they cannot even plaster their churches. They cannot do anything. God blessed us. Even the wisdom. I said, as for me, I don't want any complex church. Four squares. One, two, three, four. Nothing else. I don't want anything. Just one, two, three, four with a roof. I see. Yeah. And God gave me the wisdom. So it delivered us from so many basement, underground, slabs, complicated. Hey! One day I visited a certain brother. Said, His church is more than the CIA headquarters. So you pass here. When you go here, you turn left, you climb upstairs, you go right, you go left. More than seven years, he's still building. They are still, they have no work reach anywhere near the roofing. The church is more than KGB headquarters. Hey! I said, I don't want any glass in the church. No glass, no air conditioning, nothing, just free air. I don't want any complicated design. Squares, one, two, three, four. Hey! But you see, that was a way of supplying our needs. Because, because of that design, we were able to finish. We were able to finish. He has provided again. Hallelujah. So I want you to notice. Some of you don't have a job, but your husband has a job. But you haven't noticed it. Every day, insult, talking, criticizing, never happy. Some of you, you don't have a job, but your wife has a job. Still, you don't see. Well, there are some people, they are married to wife. The wife is more than a hole. It's a deep pit. The woman is cause of financial loss every day. She's a cause of financial loss to the marriage every day. Hey. Today, they must buy this. Tomorrow, this. Tomorrow, that. Different things. And you cannot see. But if you go out, Ghana even the last election, we had 20,000 votes and you are the president. Go, go abroad and see. We don't recognize miracles. That's why we complain. And you see people saying on radio, blood will flow. Blood will flow. There will be this in Ghana, this, this, and that. You are a stupid person. You don't know what you are saying. Fool. Fool. I say you are a fool. <laughs> <laughs> Foolish man. Do you know what is a war? <laughs> ah, if you know what is a war, you will never say that word. If you like go to Sierra Leone, you see the country is calm. They are not thinking of war at all. They, they have seen it before. People just come into your yard. Huh? Bring your hand. And they cut it just because you cross, they cross their path. Cut your leg, cut your arm. Chop off your penis. Yeah. This is what they were doing. Oh, yeah. You should see they're all there. You see somebody with one arm, two arms. They have camps and camps and camps and camps of amputees. Because when there is war, everybody goes mad. Go to Guinea. In Guinea, eh? in Guinea, when they have Miss Ghana, not Miss Ghana, Miss Guinea or Miss Lux, eh, and the winner, the winner of Miss Guinea, do you know the price? Do you know the price of Miss Guinea or Miss whatever, Malaika, those? The, the, the winner is a trip to Accra. Accra is the price to come to Accra. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. The, the winner is to come to Accra. A flight to Accra and back. Return ticket with holiday in Accra. That is the price. In Guinea. You, you, you see, you can't see miracles. When, when they are happening, you can't see it. I'm telling you. Well, because you are some way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Conakry, Accra to Conakry for holiday. You come to Accra. First prize, the, the winner is coming to Accra. <laughs> the beginning of miracles. You cannot see. <laughs> yeah. You see, we don't know what we have here. We don't know, we don't know what we have. When I went to Guinea, the president apologized to me, said, we are sorry. So many times, said, we don't have any hotels. We don't have anywhere. You know, but we are making plans to build about seven or four uh, five-star hotels. We don't have any. They don't have anything like that. There's nothing like the hotels that we have here. For visitors or nothing. He apologized. For, oh, Doris, you were there? He didn't, or oh, I'm wrong. Yeah, he apologized. There's nothing. You don't know what. So when there's a mirror like the election and it didn't become something, I mean, you are in power, you've won. Eh? See that how Akufuado, he won the first time. Oh. More than 100 something thousand people voted more for him. And they said, second round. They did the second round. <laughs> and it's all passed by just a small 19,000. Votes and the same party, then they step back and let the other people come, knowing very well that in these last eight years, when NPP was in power, they have arrested, named the people, they have all been to prison. Ibrahim Adams, I think he's went to prison, Salome, the deputy finance minister, he has been to prison and he's dead now. The who? Kwame Pepra, the finance minister, has also been to prison. Uh, Chikata has been to prison. Who? Siva Yankee has been to prison. I don't know who he is and who again. More of them. So as they, they, as they are handing back now, you are now bringing these people who are now saying, aha, when we were on this side, you saw it right to be arresting us left, right, and center. Every day you send in Sawam, go to Sawam, go to Asha Ford, go here, go here, go here. Okay, today you see Pepe. But they say, okay, take it. It's a miracle. In Africa, it's a miracle. Go to Kenya. Go to Kenya and see they killed themselves 6,000. They killed themselves 6,000 of them. They killed one another, 6,000 of them after the election. So, people don't see miracles. But that's why the Bible says the beginning. So like all his life, there's, what is that? there's not been any miracle, but this is a miracle. And you must be able to say, oh, this is no, no miracle, no miracle. That this is a miracle. This is a miracle. This is the grace of God. And as you open your heart to recognize miracles, it becomes the beginning. Now, you notice that the second miracle was also a healing, but a gradual healing. <laughs> you see, the nobleman's son, he was sick, and the Lord came to him and asked him, he said, he said okay, go, your son is okay. So he went back. As he was going, he said, your son is okay. So what time? The seventh hour. So that seventh hour, whether it's three o'clock or four o'clock, was the time that the boy just started feeling well. The fever left him. Now somebody, and the Bible said, this was the second so I'm explaining to you that you have to notice this was the first, this is the second. Remember, I gave you three financial milk. This was the first, this was the second, this was the third. And even the, there was a fourth. You must notice. And so when you notice, you will notice God is working. And you, 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 it will become like a river. After this one, and this one, somebody, somebody will say, oh, but that's not a miracle. Ah, that's why this is not a miracle. That's why you never see the next one. The next miracle, this was John chapter 4. The last verses of John chapter 4 says that this was the second miracle. The last, this is the second miracle. Now, when you go to chapter 5, that's the very next chapter, 
Okay? You see, this is where Jesus went and met a man who had been paralyzed for 38 years. Uh-huh. You see that now the things are getting wilder. Mightier miracles are happening. Do you get it? And the man impotent, waiting 38 years, he was there. Wow. And you see that, huh? The river has begun to flow because you recognize and acknowledge the first, the beginning, the humble miracles of your life, of your ministry. The humble miracles that, yes, I can acknowledge. Yes, I thank you, Father. You have, you have been kind. You have been good. I recognize your power in my life. I will never have seen the dead raised if I were not prepared to see somebody healed gradually. 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 And all the other types of miracles which people despise. Water to wine? <laughs> somebody will make a fire, even laugh at you. One day, I had a television program. And I called the television program, Miracle Days Are Here. And there was a pastor in Accra. He, he made fun of me. That pastor, when he laughs at you, 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 you feel shy. You just feel shy. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? You just feel shy. And he, he made a funny comment about the program. He said, Miracle Days Are Here. He said, the question he asked is, where did miracles, Miracle Days go to that you say that they are now here? Miracle days have been here all along. It's you that you are now seeing that miracle days are here. But why did they go? They didn't go anywhere. Miracle days have always been here. You are now. Where did they go? We, did be here. we have miracles. We, we have the keys. We, we've had miracles all this. Wow. I felt so stupid. Now you see, people want to despise you all the time. But if you, if you, if you allow yourself to be despised, you will not see the great. So that's why the Bible gives us the first miracle, which he called the beginning. And he gives us the second. This is the second one. This is the second miracle. This is the second time. First it was, this is the second time there was a miracle. And now there will be miracles we can't count. At the end of this book of John, he says, if all the things were to be written, which were done, we could not have, if the world could not contain the books. But you see that there is a time when the miracles come. And today, I feel the anointing for providing for your needs. Yeah. It's not the anointing of greediness to have so many things. That whatever you need, God will take care of you. And God will provide it for you. Including the things that don't have a price tag. They don't have a name. They don't have a number. But it has a value. And those who went to school for four years to study that course they can tell you that a lot of things are valuable but you don't know for instance i can tell you something when there is a land next to your house it's very valuable to you even though they may say this place is not, it's not a good land because it is next to you the value of the land is super high uncle philip is it true or not true what what principle is that what what, what do you what do you call that in that i can't remember that but but what is it i mean what does it why is it valuable it's valuable because it's a living place. Other people can live next to you. So it raises the price up. Of the, of the land? Yeah. Because it's this next to you. Like this land that was next to us. When I moved to Abokobi, where I lived, people thought it was in the bush. Today the whole area is filled with houses and uh, estates. Yeah expensive now to buy because somebody is next to you it can even make the if you like go to the forest and stay there you see that nobody will buy that land but when one person two people go and they bring pipe water light everything you see that suddenly the whole place so the value of a place goes up because of even who is around yeah and when next to you somebody is coming to make a drinking bar, is coming to make a drinking spot, is coming to do this, coming to do that, you realize that it would be better to buy that land. Or a mosque is coming to start Kubala early in the morning shouting, hey! So you see that, that there is a value because it is near you. So today I want you to recognize the miracles in your life. Amen. Your boss is a miracle. Your job is a miracle. Your life is a miracle. Your husband is a miracle. Your wife is a miracle. Your church is a miracle. 
Sometimes you recognize that you see, you meet somebody in the church. You don't know that it's a, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. I have found one of the greatest miracles are people. That God, God sends into your life. People. People are miracles. They are worth more than all the money you can pay for. It's just a type of person that you get. It's a miracle. May God supply your needs. And may miracles begin to flow in your life like a river in the name of Jesus. May you recognize the first miracle, the second miracle in your life, the third miracle in your life. May you recognize the beginning of miracles and of great things that the Lord has done. Father, we lift our hand and we say, Lord, we are not ungrateful. But we recognize miracles that begin certain things. And we say thank you for you have done. Receive your miracle from the Lord right now. And may they begin to flow in your life like a river. And may you recognize them and give honor to God. And thanks to God and praise to God for the miracle of provision and supply in your life. Father, we thank you for this great blessing. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your power. Just speak to the Lord for a moment and just thank him. Father, we thank you for the blessing, the blessing, the blessing. Oh, yes. Thank you for the gradual miracles and the financial miracles. We recognize them. We, we don't say they are not real. We acknowledge them. We praise you for them. We honor you for them. Hallowed be thy name, Lord. Hallowed be thy name. Holy, holy, Lord, you are worthy. And I'm honored to sing your praise. King of glory, God Almighty, hallowed be your name.
every hand lifted up now. Every heart. Up to Jesus. Say thank you, Lord. Let me. Father, thank you for miracles. I pray whatever our complex desire and need is, I pray for miracles right now. I say, Satan, I rebuke your power. I curse you. I say, go out of the people of God now. Let the people go free now in Jesus' name. I command their deliverance and their escape from their claws and the chains of wickedness and of devils. Be loose from every curse, every plague, every distress every necessity every financial weakness every physical weakness every medical condition i command you to release the claws from you go free now and be loose in the name of jesus thank you lord for your blessing thank you lord for your healing we lift our hands and we say thank you now lift your hand and just thank him for miracles thank him for healing thank you lord Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. Lord and majesty, divine authority, hallowed be. Everybody just thank God for your miracle. Believe God. the Lord of thanksgiving. Praise. Hallelujah. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you are here tonight, you don't know Jesus as your Savior. Maybe somebody invited you to church. But you don't know Jesus as your Savior. What I mean is, if you die today, if you die tomorrow, you do not know whether you will go to heaven or to hell. And, and, and I want to pray for you. Bible says, what shall it profit a man to gain everything, to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Tonight, Jesus wants to restore you and, and write your name in the book of life. And I, I also want to pray for you and with you. If you are here today, pastor, pray with me. Pray for me. I want to give my life to God. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. If you are here like that, wherever you are, Raise up your right hand and I'll pray with you. God bless you. Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ tonight. Lift it up. God bless you. If you, if you, you don't know whether you go to heaven or hell, but you want to give your life to God today, lift it up. If you've lifted your hand, God bless you. God bless you. You've lifted your hand. I want you to come to me in the front here. Just come. Walk from where you are standing. Come to me right here. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come from where you are standing. Come from wherever you are. Come to the front right now. Everybody.
Everybody lift your hand and thank God right now for his salvation. Oh, to to be my blessed Savior, I surrender. God bless you. Come stand right here. Come all the way to the front. this prayer after me. Close your eyes and everybody join and say the prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Tonight, I humble myself. I come to you just as I am. Just say it out loud, just as I am. Have mercy on me. Cleanse me. Please wash my sins with your blood. Tonight, I receive Jesus as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. From today, I belong to God. From today, I belong to Jesus. From today, I will serve Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for saving me today. Satan, listen to me. From tonight, I will not follow you again. Satan, from today, I will not serve you again. I belong to Jesus Christ, and I will serve Jesus. Lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. For saving me today. I love you Jesus. And I thank you Jesus. In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Don't, don't go back here. Brother, what's your name? Jonathan. Okay. If you see one of our pastors is standing here. I just want you to go with him. He will give you something and you come back. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering for the salvation of Jonathan tonight. Is it not a blessing? Wow, there's so much rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that is saved tonight. Hallelujah. There's always somebody who needs to be saved in church. And once the blood of Jesus is flowing through a church, it's alive. And there's always salvation coming on. Amen. You may be seated for a moment. I want you to take out your tithes and any special offering. I, I just sensed to take a special offering tonight. Um, if you have a tithe or a spe any special offering. But I want to do a special offering. I was not going to take an offering. I was just about to call Bishop Saki, but I, I feel I should do that. I want to pray over it and believe God with you for a financial blessing tonight. Amen. How many believe that God can financially help you? Amen. Wow. We are not expecting miracles of greed. We are expecting miracles of whatever we need. If you need a house, you have a house. If you need a car, you have a car. Amen. Whatever it is you need, God can provide it and he's provided. If you need a husband and the husband is worth two million dollars, God is going to provide that. Think about it. You can't buy a husband, eh? You may be the most beautiful girl, like Princess Diana, but you don't have a husband. Yeah? You have a lot of boyfriends, but no husband. Wow. Everybody would like to sleep with you, but no one would like to marry you. Because of your attitude. So, you realize that you need God's grace. Miracles. Amen. Come, if you have your title, I want to receive a special offering of 20 CDs. 20 CD offering. I believe that this is not the offering. This is just a special prayer of provision. If you want to sow part of that special offering, just come right now. And If you also have tithes or any envelope from the past, 
whatever, just come and put it in this basket, the one here. And I, I sense it's going to be a blessing. 20 Ghanaian cities. You can use other currency. We accept all currencies in the church. But 20 cities, I believe that is a special blessing for today. Plus your tithes and other. Can we have some more baskets in the front here so that it reduces the pressure on one? Can, can somebody bring this basket to me, please? And can somebody bring me that basket? Thank you very much. Right to this side. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Wow. Father, bless them. Bless. 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 You will never be in need. I said you will never be in need. Even wine. Even wine that you need to be provided. Hey, Jesus can do fantastic miracles. So you will be thinking that it is something. That cannot be done. But God can do special miracles. Receive your blessing from the Lord right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 20 Ghana cities. May whatever you are doing turn into a miracle of provision. May you never be in need of anything. Any armed robber who comes to your house, may he not be able to enter your house in Jesus' name. May he die on the within the next few days after attempting to come to your house. May the angel of the Lord strike him down. Anybody who is planning to attack you, may he be attacked first in Jesus' name. Anybody who is planning a bad thing against you, may the Lord strike down his eyes and may he not, his eyes not be seen well anymore in the name of Jesus. May he develop a severe disease that he requires admission at hospital in the name of Jesus. And all those that are supposed to fail you, may God touch them to like your face. Hey, shabalaba, sandolababa. May you be like Jesus' name. And may your needs always be met. Ah, Shandala Baba Baba Sambara. Kaba Baba Shandala Baba. Somebody here, you will be traveling not abroad, but traveling in the country. God is providing your needs for that traveling work. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Be blessed. May your needs be met. Somebody will be driving. And God is going to provide you what you need to be driving. Drive it now in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Father, thank you for this special offering. Encourage your children. Let them not have anything that they will be always praying about. Let their prayers become answered more quickly. Send angels into their situations with the answers. Hey, send them, Lord, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome, Bishop Saki. This is not an offering, just a special welcome, Bishop Saki, to receive the offering. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Push your neighbor and say, what a word, what a word, what a word, what a word, what a word. Hallelujah. Wow, I'm so blessed. How many of you are blessed tonight? Wow, I'm so blessed, I tell you. So blessed. I don't know whether you feel as blessed as I feel. This is such a vintage message. I'm telling you, God has blessed us. God has blessed us. I Bishop was preaching. I said, hey, God is too great to give us such a revelation. Somebody will come and open our eyes to this. How many of you haven't read, haven't read the script, that scripture before? Over and over again. And we just gloss round over it as if it's one of the, just a, a verse that occupies space in the Bible. The beginning of the miracle, the beginning of the, and just carry along. 
But as you carry on, you realize that, hey, the fact that you notice the beginning opened a certain door for great ones. Oh, Bishop, thank you so much. I'm so blessed. You have no idea. So blessed. Pa. By this blessing. Amen. Hmm? The beginning of the miracle was you becoming a shepherd. Before you realize you're a bishop. It's the beginning of miracles. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. What a word. I, d I don't know, but I think this is the way that we need that all the financial miracles, God was just providing the needs of people. Yeah. Not just to need you and a stretch, travel, God, some just, you need this, I'll just give it to you. Bread, I just multiply. Fish, I give it to you. House, I give it to you. This, it just gives, just, that's all. And we are carrying on. God will give you what you need. Yeah. Oh, amen. Notice it all. Notice it. You know what Bishop is saying? I'm supposed to take the offering. Let's take your offering out, please. <laughs> I'm so blessed, I tell you. When the message is come, you feel that this message, you go somewhere and preach the message, isn't it? Well, I'll preach it here at the Kodesh again. It's not a problem. Mm. I don't understand what I said. I'll preach it here at the Kodesh again. Yeah. Hallelujah. But you just have to notice it. Notice, notice, if you notice the beginning, then you are moving on. You see the gradual ones also. Then you see, but by the time the book of John ended, they said that what Jesus had done and taught, no, all the world cannot contain it. All the books in the world cannot contain it. Only because there was a beginning. My God. Hey, take out your offering and let's close. Have you taken it out already? Some of you, your beginning of miracle is when the first day you gave 20 CDs was the beginning. Now it's easy to give to, isn't it? So if you have to learn to break your own financial record, it's also the beginning of a miracle. That, hey, I've never given 10 Ghana CDs before. Today I'll give it. And then the beginning of, you, before you realize you're writing check, $1,000 offering. You may easily forget how you gave 10 CDs Lift up your offering, everybody. Lift it up high. I'm waiting for you. Let it go high, higher than your head. 20 CDs, 10 CDs, 5 CDs. If you brought 20 CDs already, it is a special offering, but this one is the offering we are taking. Okay, let it go higher than your head. All right. Some of you have forgotten how we give offering. You've got to put your two hands together and lift it up high. Uh -huh. Lift your two hands together up high. And don't squeeze the money because sometimes it takes longer time to open it, straighten it up before you count it. All right. Father, thank you so much for today. We appreciate and love you. Grateful to you for this outstanding message we have heard tonight. Thanking you for this church. Lord, we thank you for how far you brought us. But there was a beginning. And we do not fail to acknowledge that it is you that began with us. And Lord, for every hand that is lifted up, for the financial miracles that we need, we know that there's a beginning and we acknowledge indeed that you're, begin you're doing a new work in our lives. We pray that you help us to trust in you for the beginning and for the gradual until the instantaneous ones come. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, please take a booster as well. Take a booster. Find a booster. Hey, Momo, uh, go to your back and take a, take a booster. All right? Lift it up in your left hand. Father, we bless you for these boosters also in Jesus' name. Amen. Ashes, receive the offerings now. Fantastic. Fantastic. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a a blessing. Amen. We are going to be having some three days fasting and prayer. Is it a good idea? It's a long time you fasted, isn't it? Uh -huh. Some of you have forgotten how to fast. But we are going to start fasting. We're going to have some three days dry fasting. What do you think about that? Yeah. Very easy. 
Three days there, you can survive. So give you the dates towards the end of the month. You're going to have three days of just dry fasting and then um, trusting the Lord. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Tell you, the miracle has begun. Tell you, the miracle days are here. The miracle days are here. <laughs> Wonderful. Ashes, please go, hurry up and finish with the offerings. Right. Pastors, Friday, what time? Says, oh, Friday, what time? 4 p.m. or so. Yeah. 4, 4 5 p.m. You are the Kodesh pastors, all right? You register and then we start our Titus and Crete on um, the Friday evening. We carry on. Right. Nobody's allowed to be sick. We, we disallow you from being uh, sick. You have to be there. If you are sick, we come to your house. <laughs> we have meeting in your house. Ajwa, do you understand? Why do you understand English as well? I'm talking to you. you don't you know the one you're not uh, Stand up and let, let me know who the one I'm talking to. So do you make, make your face as if you don't know the one I'm talking to. Can you hear what I'm saying? Uh -huh, now you're answering. It's Osropo. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Fantastic. Thursday, turning point. Come, amen. Many wonderful things. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful things are happening at the turning point services. And, um, da, 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 da. yeah. When we are fasting, we're going to have an all night towards the end of the month. Amen. The major, you may scream all night. So we'll fast Thursday, Friday, we'll fast overnight, and Saturday, we'll pray, and then we'll end. Wow. Is it a good idea? Right. Can we stand to our feet, please? Tell your friend. I want to personally buy today's CD for you. I want to personally buy today's CD. Sharon, tell her, tell him. I want to personally buy today's CD for you as a gift. As a gift. Personal gift. Uh, where is it? Today's word. Bring it. Do you have it? Do you record it? I want to personally buy it for you as my Easter bonus. All right. Okay. Can we share the grace now? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, communion, fellowship, the contribution, and the participation of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.